lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? I'm doing all right. How are you? Pretty good. Yeah? It's not what you were just telling me. Uh, uh, I like to be optimistic, but <laughs> it's been a pretty rough week. Yeah. Rough day in particular. So. Well, uh, it could have been worse. You could have caught fire. <laughs> it could have been worse. <laughs> I don't think that counts as catching fire. I could have set myself on fire, I think is where you're going with that. I mean, the result is you catch on fire. Well, I guess that's true. <laughs> in the um, end. Yeah. I, I try not to try to stay away from fire in general. Yeah. I don't know much about that. I know that uh, they did release uh, or have left available a bunch of his writings, which they don't usually do. So yeah. so they want us to know what he had to say. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> um, and, and from the sounds of things, I haven't read it all, but um, they did a pretty good job breaking some of it down on no agenda. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it sounds like he was a bit out there, but not completely. I mean, yeah, I think I, uh, the idea I got was that, I mean, he brought up a lot of good points and maybe took some of them too far. Yeah, That's a lot of, of economic take. conspiracy, I guess. Yeah. Um, but there's good reason for that. I, I mean, I've been going through um, the uh, Creature from Jekyll Island. I mean, if, you, if you have any questions about economic conspiracies, take up that book. Oh, yeah. Um, and you'll say, huh, so it's not a conspiracy. Conspiracy, <laughs> or it's not a conspiracy theory. It's just a conspiracy. It's, it's just a conspiracy. Yeah. <laughs> um, right. I honestly, okay. So I don't, I don't have a lot to say about that, uh, except that you know you probably shouldn't light yourself on fire. I mean, if you want to make a statement, that's a way to do it. I can't imagine a worse way to go. Yeah. Whenever uh, I've been asked, you know what, you know what's the worst way you can imagine dying? That's it. Yeah. Like burning to death is. It's got to be bad. Yeah. Um, um, mine's in the it, airplane. Like, to me, that's my. But falling is a thing for me. So that's the reason that one. Yeah, you don't out. really feel any pain in falling. I don't know. I've, I've, rode, I've rode many a ride that would beg to differ. <laughs> well, that's not, that's not falling, though. That's yeah. being pulled or dragged or whatever. You get yeah. pain on a roller coaster from being jerked from side to side. Uh, maybe you, you do. That part don't bother me. Like the drops are what bothers me. Like that's well. What's the pain? I don't know. Like in my chest. <laughs> Maybe you should get your heart checked. <laughs> Probably should. And in, in, in all seriousness, that last trip we made to Disney, I enjoyed. I, I avoided direct drop rides just because of that. Because I was like, you dude, I could seriously have a heart attack. I think. Mm. Um. So yeah. <laughs> better get on those uh, wacky jacks. Was a wacky jack. I showed you a wacky jack one night. Oh, you, you did show me the wacky the, jacks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the wacky, yeah. yeah. The, the crazy jumping jacks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so I, I don't have a whole lot to, to say about this. I, I, uh, I mean, it's, it certainly makes a statement. The thing that sticks out to me about this, though, yeah. is that I watched a, a news clip of a woman reporting on the protests that were going on and when this happened. Yeah. And, and honestly, she did a pretty good job, all things considered of describing what was going on. And uh, there were some details in there that were, um, I mean, kind of horrific. Like, uh, when she says, you know, I can smell, uh, some kind of accelerant, um, I can smell flesh burning, oh, <laughs> you know, that's, uh, all right. But the thing, the thing that stood out to me about it is that ke- she kept saying like three times, I think in this 90 seconds or whatever, um, she said, he's still emblazoned. <laughs> yeah. And while that sounds like that should be right. That's not what that word means. <laughs> that's not grammatically correct. No, it's that's not the right word. <laughs> not the right word. <laughs> yeah. Well, you I, got me because it sounds right to me. Yeah, like. it, emblazoned doesn't have anything to do with fire. Emblazoned is is like uh, when you have a logo or something. Uh, it, when something's inscribed with like a logo or a herald or something like that, then it then you know it would be like. Um, you know, the, the clan's herald was emblazoned on his shield. 
Okay. Yeah. That's I mean, what that that makes sense <laughs> to me too, but I mean, it, it may have some root in fire, like it may come out as like some kind of blacksmithing or something, but yeah. but in the modern day, the word emblazoned has nothing to do with fire. Yeah. Well, nothing at all. I just have to say, I just picture all of this going on and Mike standing to the side and this person saying, he's emblazoned. And Mike's like, uh, that's not the correct use of that term. <laughs> you keep using this word. I do not think it means what you think it means. Yeah, yeah. I totally see that. Oh, <laughs> uh, well. Ooh. Um, yeah, so that's what stood out to me about the report. And, and I didn't honestly pay a lot of attention to the news afterwards. Cause, really? Yeah. yeah. Um, oh. But we do, there are things to talk about. Uh, I, I want, there's something that I was planning to talk about that I kind of want to want to look at more deeply before I go into any, any real deal detail on. You want to tease just, it here then? Uh, sure. Um, so there's all the talk about the Boeing things and clearly Boeing seems to be having some problems, although oh, Boeing's got problems. <laughs> um, the, well, it, it, this could be another e- economic topic for the future, but the, um, the entity responsible for doing commercial aircraft inspections in the United States yeah. to make sure that they're airworthy, et cetera, is the FAA. Yeah. It's the Federal <laughs> Aviation Administration. Yeah. It's not the it's not even the airlines. Yeah. And so this is another one of those situations where like if you took this power out of the federal government and gave it to the airlines, the airlines have way more of an incentive to make sure that their planes are airworthy <laughs> right. than the FAA does. Yeah. Because if the FAA fails over and over again, then they just get more money. They get more money, exactly. <laughs> and if the airline fails, it doesn't take many before the airline fails. Yeah, exactly. So, um, but it, it I, is I wanna, interesting I, because I had I did think that that responsibility fell on the airline, and I mean this is just kind of anecdotal. I hadn't actually went through and looked, but best I can tell, like all of these incidences has been with Southwest. Like it seems like Southwest keeps coming up at least. Um, I oh, hadn't well, actually maybe. looked. I thought there was at least one like United. Was there a United? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, okay. I, I think, but um, but I I want to try and I, I want to try and track this process farther before I really go into detail about it. Yeah. But we can say ultimately the responsibility for aircraft inspections lies with the FAA. Yeah. Another Which just federal has bureaucracy. no incentive to take care of you. No. Yeah. Um, probably the thing that we should spend some time on uh, are is our Congress, our government's um, intent on dismantling everything that we have that they did on Saturday. <laughs> Dude, so it was a rough weekend for Liberty. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So the, uh, Ron Paul wrote an article. I got a quote from a Ron Paul article about this this week. Um, he was writing about April 20th, the Saturday, when all this legislation passed. And uh, the title of the article was like, it, oh gosh, it was some kind of, kind of fatalist Title. I w- now I can't remember it, but it was like, is this the was this the last nail in the coffin, oh, or, yeah. or something like that? Yeah. Um, but <laughs> this quote in like the second paragraph of his article was great. He said, "On this day, referring to that Saturday, yep. uh, Congress passed legislation to fund two and a half wars, hand what's left of our privacy over to the CIA and NSA, and give the U.S. president the power to shut down whatever part of the internet he disagrees with." Yeah. All in one day. <laughs> yep. All in a day's work, right? <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, uh, over a weekend, nevertheless. Yeah. So there was the Pfizer reauthorization, which, uh, Mike Johnson <laughs> said that he would never allow. And then I think he cast the deciding vote. That was what I heard. Yeah. Which seemed like odd. went down from the chair to cast the deciding vote. Yeah. Um, and yeah, because that's unusual. Because he's in the House. Uh, that, yeah. that's, I mean, I know that's how it works in the Senate. Does the mm-hmm. vice president well, in a it, tie? No, no, no. I mean, he, the vice president casts a de- deciding vote in a tie in the Senate. In the Senate, yeah. That's Not what a senator. He's, yeah. He is a House of Representatives. So what, what I, as I understand it, it doesn't come up like this very often. 
Yeah. So usually because there's four, 435 members, 438, 400. I don't know. That oh number. gosh. It's over. 400. I really should. Know. I just, I just know it's over 400. Pretty sure it's <laughs> either 435 or 438. Those are the two numbers that are in my head. Fair enough. Uh, so anyway, um, because there are so many members uh, of the house, a bill usually doesn't come down to a single vote. Yeah, that's very unlikely. Yeah, yeah, so there's no reason for him to go, you know, cast a vote. But in this case, he did because it was yeah. that close. It, yeah, it was it was hang, hanging not by the third. So yeah, that's so my understanding curious, of the reason does, for this. Does the speaker normally vote? Probably, okay. or maybe he just doesn't have to. Well, I mean, I kind of yeah. wondered that. Like, I mean, I don't what's know. The point I, I would think if, it would be weird that he didn't vote, but. Yeah, I mean, still, because um, that would actually be strong to protect his record. <laughs> Even though I guess... Oh, yeah, absolutely. If he didn't have to vote on anything, then yeah. he just... Yeah. Um, that's, that's interesting. I hadn't thought about that. But anyway, he said that he wouldn't pass this legislation. And when, when asked why, or like without significant change, I guess is what he said, Yeah. Um, to protect Americans' privacy. Yeah. And then after he voted for it, he was asked why... And he said, well, I've seen the, um, the secret intel reports or the top secret intel reports, and, and that convinced me that this is important to keep America safe and whatever, or <laughs> yeah. something like that. Well, why only release it so we can all can see it? Well, I might feel better. <laughs> that's, a, that's an interesting point. And because it came up again on this $95 billion foreign aid package that was signed, yeah. that he said that he wouldn't, um, that he wouldn't approve when, yeah. and then voted for. Yeah. And um, so then on, oh, I got a, there's a bug flying. You got to bite at it. I'm, I'm trying to do it without making too much noise, but uh. instead I'm talking into the mic and <laughs> explaining what's going on. You're getting a play by play of <laughs> me trying to get this little, I think, I guess it's a fruit fly. You didn't get house. it by the way. No, I know <laughs> it, it got away. I, I could have really smacked at it, but I would have like banged the table and who knows what they would have heard at the other end. I was trying to be conscientious about our listeners. Fair enough. All right. <laughs> now we have to deal with the fruit fly, but whatever. Yeah, I got a <laughs> set of chopsticks on the table. If I'd have had them over here, I would have You could do that. Nothing. That would have been the deciding factor. <laughs> yeah, right? I would have gotten them then. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. What was I saying? Oh, yeah. $95 billion. Yeah. So, uh, so he said the same thing about that, essentially, that... Um, this Ukraine aid, uh, it was important to pass because he'd seen the secret intel reports um, that told how Russia was going to take over all of Europe if <laughs> we didn't stop them in Ukraine. Oh, that's my favorite one. <laughs> so now, of course, these intel reports come from the agencies that you're really giving this money to. Yeah. So imagine... There's no incentive for them to cook the books there. Yeah, it, think. it's You're, so surprising that the agency that monetarily benefits from you signing this legislation produced reports that you can't independently verify that assured you that you needed to give them this money. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I'll tell you, and I mean, this is complete conspiracy theory here, but it makes me wonder if they didn't sit him down and... and not only give him some classified information, but be like, you know, we know where your wife and son are, and we know <laughs> blah, 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 like some some shady, just straight underhanded... Yeah, it could be. Carrot works better, though. Maybe. This is well, what we can do for you if you, you know, that yeah. it's just more effective. Yeah. No, you, um, and you may be right, but something, to me, something happened here, though. He didn't just see these classified yeah. reports and be like, oh, well, this is so serious. We got, like, I, I don't Actually, believe Actually, the, the best believe approach that. is both of those things is the carrot and the stick. Yeah. Here's what we can do for you if you do things our way. Yeah. And here's what we can do to you if you don't. Yeah, exactly. So, your choice. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, I, yeah, I do find it interesting that he's like, oh, well, you know, secret intel reports, blah, blah, blah. All right. So it would be nice if the rest of us got to see whatever it was that made you decide to ship all our money somewhere else. What were we saying? <laughs> <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> yeah, we, we had a little technical difficulty there. Last thing recorded was it would be really nice if he shared that intel with us 
that is his excuse for sending our money elsewhere. Yeah, I mean, because if you... Like, the whole idea that we're going to spend all this and we just kind of have to take it on their word mm-hmm. that, that you know, all of this is as dire as they say it is. Right. I mean, I don't buy it, but... I don't buy it either. <laughs> uh, I, it would be... It would be nice if I could decide for myself, though. Yeah. Um, this or is... if, even if the voters could decide for themselves, because, I mean, that's really what you're talking about here, yeah. is people are, you basically end up with people who are like me or you who are kind of like, they say, don't, don't exactly trust everything the government says. And then you've got other people who are like, oh, well, we, we have to trust the government. They would never lie to us. <laughs> like that's Yeah, I don't know where those people live. I don't know, but they don't live around here. No. <laughs> like, I don't run in those circles. I'll put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, well, even they know better, right? They just think that their guy wouldn't lie to them. Well, those same a, people completely of... changed their tune when Donald Trump's in office. Yeah, no, there's something um, to that, too. But uh, so, yeah, there's that and then the FISA uh, reauthorization. Of course, the, the FISA thing, that allows them to... Um, <sighs> Okay, so it, the idea is that uh, it, they do foreign surveillance, um, or, you know, surveillance of foreign nationals in a foreign country. But if you're talking to a foreign national in a foreign country, and I assume that this includes, I, I'm, I'm hoping that we're not repeating stuff that actually was on the recording now. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I feel like we had this conversation, but did we record it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So sorry if this is a duplication, everybody. Uh, we're lost. <laughs> uh, truly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my cousin in Australia holds dual citizenship, which yeah. makes her also an Australian. Yeah. I communicate with her. Does that mean that they can um, record my conversations? And here's the scary thing, is that they get a two-hop rule. So if I'm talking to her and they're surveilling her, then they're surveilling me, and they'll surveil anybody that communicates with me, too. Ah, that's me, too. Mm Mm-hmm. That's not good. And our listeners. (laughs) And our listeners. Yeah, right. (laughs) Everyone. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, I don't know. It's, it's, It's ripe to be abused. And the it, and it's a secret court also, so yeah. more government secrets. This is supposed to be this form of government is supposed to not keep a lot of secrets yeah. from the people. Well, and that's that's actually what I think what I was saying when we cut off. Um, like, so there's really not a whole lot you can do if you're caught up in that. Like, even if let's say that they wrongfully tapped your phone. It's all secret courts and stuff anyway. Mm-hmm. Like it's Yeah, not, you don't know until they use it against you. You don't know until they use it against you, and then what's your attorney going to do? Are you in the secret court that <laughs> that the Constitution applies here? No. Like, okay. It makes you wonder if they can just say, uh, well, we ha- <laughs> do like Mike Johnson and say, yeah. well, we have information that says that your client is guilty. We can't share that with you. Yeah, right. <laughs> but we know. But we know. Yeah, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, what kind of justice system is that? Yeah. Like, I mean, um, that's not actually what happens, I don't think. You don't think? But I don't think. You also don't know. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that it could happen. Yeah. Um, now, I, I think that the war stuff is actually scarier. Um, yeah. the, we're talking about 60 plus billion for Ukraine to... All right. To lose me, a war. Yeah, let me let me try and break this down. It's 60 plus billion so that more Ukrainians die and more of their country is destroyed. Yeah. Uh, to reach the same end anyway. Yeah. That end's coming one way or the other. Yeah. It's just a question of when and how many people are going to die on the in-between time. Mm-hmm. It's 26 billion to uh, Israel to keep dropping bombs on civilians in Gaza. Well, I mean, we got to get rid of those Palestinians. Yeah, well, that's exactly what they're trying to do. Uh, no, I, yeah, <laughs> they're exactly. Trying to empty the land of, get all the Arabs off of Israel. That's that's yeah. the, the, the grand goal. Yeah. Uh, and just to point out, while this is going on, they're still kicking Palestinians off their land in the West Bank. There is no Hamas there. Yeah. yeah. They're not part of this. They're just Palestinians. But while we're distracted, yeah. then, you know, they're keeping, keep going there. And, um, 4 billion roughly 
actually it's more than that because we're we're also contributing to uh, there's also additional monies going to various other um, things in Southeast Asia or in the China Sea or in that area around China to uh, you know to antagonize the largest country in the world who <laughs> also has thermonuclear got, weapons got, got, got to get that near peer um, what do you call it? War? Yeah, competitor. yeah. Near peer competitor. competitor. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. We gotta keep them riled up. We can't. We can't forget about them. That's yeah. where the real money's at. Exactly. Exactly. And like, I'm sorry, Taiwan. I don't care. I care. I don't care with my money. But I, I mean, I, I I do care. I think. I that, mean, I don't. I don't want any. So I don't think uh, okay. we should be over there helping them. No, you're but, right. But I do care. I, I care. I want. Um, I, I don't for want everybody. death. I don't want war. And I think that this funding increases the likelihood of war rather than decreasing it. No, one hundred percent. Um. So. Uh, oh, oh. And uh, it allowed the the last thing that <laughs> Ron Paul was talking about. Um, it is trying to force a sale of TikTok. Mm-hmm. As well, or any other. Entity that the president decides, yeah, arbitrarily apparently, yeah. Um, is controlled by uh, a foreign power that is not our friend, maybe because it's no. not it's not like an enemy. Yeah, it's like a rival. Yeah. Now, uh, something interesting about this that just occurred to me, and I, I don't know. Tell me what you think here, but I mean. What if Trump ends up becoming president and decides to go after all of the social media companies, except the one that he has a big except for hand Trump in? Social. Yeah, and just start eliminating all of these social media companies till there's nothing left but Truth Social, or at least decrease them enough to make Truth Social the biggest one. I mean, I'm just saying, mm-hmm. like that's that's the reason you don't want to give anybody, particularly a president, that type of power. Yeah. Um. I well, mean, it's just rife for corruption. According to uh, a lot of the left, um, the Supreme Court would absolutely allow it because they just do whatever Trump tells them. <laughs> well, wouldn't go that far, but not. That's what they're saying I right know. now. Well, you know, I read an L.A. Times article today that had absolutely zero news in it. Yeah, but went on and on about how Trump's a criminal and corrupt. Yeah. And then it, it said, crime is when blah, 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 something that Trump did. And corrupt is when blah, 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 something that Trump did. And that was the entire <laughs> article. Wow. And it was supposed to be about um, the Supreme Court case about whether, uh, you know, presidents have immunity for actions that they're taking in office. Yeah. Which yeah. I would love for them to eliminate the idea of presidential Im- immunity. Yeah, there's well, so this case is interesting in the fact Mm -hmm. that I guess that's going to get decided here. Maybe. Yeah, probably. They'll probably narrow their decision down to a point where they didn't really make a decision. It just resolves this particular case. Yeah, I mean, maybe that's that's how they tend to do things like this. Yeah, Um, it is an interesting argument about whether. You know, if the president oversees a war, is he responsible for the deaths of everybody during yeah. the war? Can he be criminally prosecuted for all the deaths that occurred during the war? Yeah. Um, but, and, and I don't think that that's fair, although I don't think that we should be involved in war. I, I think that that would be a good way of keeping us out of war. Maybe. <laughs> like, yeah, um, if the president so thought he was going to be personally responsible for it. Yeah, in that sense, I kind of appreciate the idea. Um but what about, you know, what about uh, Obama um, bombing Anwar al and his kid? Yeah. Like, those people were American citizens. Yeah. Why didn't they get their day in court? That, to me, is, a, is an assassination of an American citizen. Yeah. No, I completely agree. It's not quite the same situation. So, I don't know. It, it's interesting to see how... It'll be interesting to see what happens with that. The other um, big news, which I think is probably 
trying to distract from the war in Gaza is uh, all the protest campus protests. Yeah. Uh, the pro Palestinian campus protests, yeah. which depending on which way the news source you go to leans, they're either anti Israel or pro Palestinian. <laughs> yeah. Um, which is, I guess, the, uh, well, you know, depending on which one you go to, are they anti abortion or pro life? <laughs> you know, it's the same, <laughs> yeah. same kind of thing. But, um, it, I find it strange that the media has been redirected to campus pro anti war protests on campus, or at least anti funding of a war on campus. The narrative is that Jewish students are afraid, but there's a pretty strong contingent of Jewish students involved in the protests. Yeah. And I haven't, come across any real anti-Semitic event that has occurred at any of these campus protests. Uh, And I went hunting because I keep hearing this, this thing about uh, is, you know, Jewish students being attacked and so forth. I came across one story of a Jewish woman who was injured, um, who says she was attacked and they stabbed her in the eye with a flagpole but there was video of the event, and what was happening was there was a pro-Palestinian thro- protester waving a flag, and she walked into it. <laughs> was they, she on her phone when she walked into it? <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, probably. I'm just saying. <laughs> probably. That's uh, a pet that, peeve that of mine. Make, yeah, people walking sense, around right? on their phones. Yeah, <laughs> looking down instead of looking where they're going. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So... She wasn't attacked. Yeah. Um, the weirdest story that I came across was a Jewish woman that took her daughter into the middle of one of these encampments, protest encampments, yeah. and proclaimed very loudly that she was Jewish. Yeah. And nobody cared. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, just she just, got no attention at all. Yeah. And the thing that bothers me the most about this is that she took her kid into this situation with the intent of creating a violent situation with the intent of drawing violence towards her and her kid. Yeah. <laughs> How messed up is that? That's pretty messed up. So, uh, and then there was, um, you know, the talk of the protesters are chanting, um, death to Israel and death to America. Uh, so I, and my, my mom told me last night that if I just watched Fox news, that I would see these things. Cause I was like, I haven't seen any of this. So yeah. I went seriously hunting, including on the Fox news website today. Yeah. And, uh, I came across a video of a protest in Michigan. That was not a campus protest. It was yeah. not a student protest, yeah. um, where there were like 40 or 50 people. And, uh, about six of them started chanting death to America in Arabic. Oh yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's what I came across. <laughs> yeah. Um, now you can't deny that some people are just stupid. It, it made me think of, I'm sure that some of this, ha- I'm sure that they can find incidents where some guy is saying something stupid. Oh yeah. That's uh, right. That's, the media is real good at that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I thought of the, uh, the anti-war protests, the, um, anti-Ukraine war protests that were going on in DC last year. They had several thousand people there, and the news story everywhere was Nazis at anti-war rally, mm-hmm. and they had pictures on every media site of a guy uh, that had a guy with a Nazi flag carrying a Nazi flag around. Now, mm-hmm. if you go look in all these pictures, it's the same guy in every single one. There was one guy there with a Nazi flag and every single media organization took a picture of it and used that as the example of what was going on at that anti-war protest. Wow. Now, it wouldn't surprise me a bit if one of those media organizations sent that guy with that (laughs) Nazi flag so that they could take that picture or if he was just, you know, some spook. Some, yeah. yeah. Or or whatever. Or maybe just an idiot. Yeah, or maybe it it could just be that he's an idiot. But obviously that wasn't representative of what was going on at those Which is the point, yeah. Um, And certainly uh, real anti-Semitism or attacking Jews or chanting death to Israel or death to America is not representative of these campus protests yeah. um there there hasn't been any real violence yeah um now you can make a case for 
these people can say what they want, but they don't have the right to prevent other people from going to class or that. Like, okay, I'm, I'm, yeah. I can understand these arguments and I'm more or less on board with them. Yeah. Um, but the idea that this is some kind of dangerous situation or whatever is absurd. And it's really weird to focus all this time talking about how dangerous these situations are where nobody has died while in the meantime, ignoring the fact that more than 34,000 Palestinians have died in Gaza in the last six months and more than 20,000 of them are women and children. And that 65 to 75% of all of the uh, residential homes in Gaza have been damaged or destroyed or that 85% of the schools in Gaza have been damaged or destroyed. Yeah. That's where the real violence is happening. Right. <laughs> it it boggles my mind that people don't see that. That yeah. that I, I just I I don't know. I like I like the hope that people just listen to the mainstream media and take that in and don't don't truly understand what the mm-hmm. situation is on the ground. Yeah. Um but but I don't know. I mean I just I can't imagine rooting for that, mm-hmm. regardless, on either side. Um like I just I don't I, I, it boggles my mind. And the thing that I've been thinking about more here lately too, just in reference to all of this, whether it's Ukraine or, um, you know, Gaza or even like old wars, like world, world war two, like all of this is just governments. Like this is governments getting to a, a, tiss, a tissy and then send their civilians to go die. Yeah. Like, ah, it's just so irritating to me. <laughs> yeah. Fights are between people. Wars are between governments. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm, I'm frustrated with the conflation of anti-Semitism with criticism of Israel. Yeah. This drives me nuts. Everybody yeah. that's protesting against what Israel is doing is not anti-Semitic. Yeah. That's not to say that some of them aren't. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure I'm, that some of them are. Because once a, again, it goes back to the, there's idiots everywhere. Yeah. On all sides. But I bet it's a small percentage. I bet it is a small percentage. But I'm not saying, I just don't want to be trying to say that it doesn't exist. And I, I, I could be wrong about this, but I would suggest that the white supremacists in this country that are real anti-Semites yeah. probably hate the Arabs more. <laughs> well, they at, least just hate, guessing. they at least hate both. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like I, I would, I would say that for certain. Like yeah. now, whether which side they fall on is the worst, I don't know. But they're not fans of either of them. Yeah. There's perfectly good faith reasons to be criti- critical of the Israeli state, and I have tried to be very careful on this podcast because I don't care what you believe. Yeah, I don't care what you believe in terms of your religion, what God you worship, whatever. It does not matter one bit to me. I do yeah. not care. Yeah, but. I do have an issue with people oppressing other people. Yeah. Yeah. The using force to deprive people of choice and rights. And yeah. that's what the Israeli state is doing. And I have tried to be very careful to make sure that I am not talking about the Jews because yeah. I don't care about the Jews. I yeah. don't, that sounded bad. I I mean that that's not that's not relevant to me. Yeah. What I do care about is what the Israeli state is doing. Yeah. And I said this before, I criticize the U.S. government that does not make me anti-American, and me criticizing the Israeli government does not make me an anti-Semite. Yeah. And at least when it comes to our government, I criticize them because I want them to do better. Yeah. Like, like I want to be proud of my government. Like, I, I mean, I'd prefer not to have one, but mm-hmm. if I'm going to have one, I would like for it to be one that represents my values, yeah. which I feel like are values of this country, mm-hmm. um, but that's not what we get. Yeah. Well, and I criticize our government for the same things at its root that I criticize the Israeli state for, which is stealing the property of the people that reside there. Yeah. Yeah. But the Israeli state has done it to an extreme with the Palestinians. Yeah. And have made it very clear that their ideal would be to remove all Arabs from the river to the sea. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And the, the protests here are saying... For the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. But the opposite is what's going on. But the opposite is definitely what's going on. And Israel, like government officials have said explicitly that they want from the river to, to the sea to be one security state under the control of Israel. Yeah. 
And I'm just saying, if you think that even if they got that, that they would stop there, I just don't buy it. I think that that the Israeli state is is one that will grow and grow and grow. Yeah. It seems to be inherently expansionist. They uh, And I know that's what the the other side accuses Russia of and this, mm-hmm. that, and the other thing. But we've laid out the case very strongly that that's not what Russia is up to. Yeah. But And just to review with Israel, at the time of the formation of the state of Israel, they uh, Jews controlled <laughs> something like 12% of the land in historic Palestine. Yeah. They were given 54% of the land in historic Palestine. Yeah. They were given more than half of the land that they didn't reside on in place of the people that did reside on it. And yeah. I also feel compelled to point out every time we bring this up that in the beginning, the Arabs and the Jews got along fine. Yeah. The Arabs and the Jews were together against the British <laughs> crown. <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, that it was British imperialism that was the problem. Yeah. But once the British were kicked out, then yeah. the Israelis turned on the Arabs. Yeah. On the Palestinians. Yeah. So they had they were given fifty four percent of the land. Um. At, at the then in the Nakba in nineteen forty eight, they drove off something like three quarters of a million Palestinians from their homes. Yeah. And took seventy eight percent of the land. And then. Um, in 67, they took the rest. Yeah. And, and that's where we stand right now. Yeah. It's been a stalemate ever since. More or less. Yeah. So they're just, they're just trying to completely empty the rest of that. And it's not even Gaza that they care about so much. It's actually the West Bank that they mostly care about, the historic Judea. Yeah. Um, but anyway... The uh, yeah, the Russians have been accused of wanting to take over all of Europe, and there was a uh, Medvedev made a statement last week, I guess, um, where he was talking about how that's ri- ridiculous. They don't have any interest in controlling Poland. No. That they don't have any interest in controlling these other NATO states. What they do have an interest in is making sure that Ukraine does not become a NATO state, yeah, and that's, that's all they ever cared about. That's that's been the fight. From that's that's the reason for the fight. Yes, you know. Um, and at, at this point, <laughs> I actually read a really good article about the the history of the history. I don't know. Do you call it history when it was only like two years ago? Yeah. <laughs> but um, the uh, Western intervention in the peace talks. Yeah. Yeah. That, um, and. You know, for those of you out there that still think that the the government is trying, that the U.S. government is acting in your interests or on your behalf or cares about human rights or whatever, they've actually made it really clear. Go look at statements. They've actually made it really clear that their interest in Ukraine is weakening Russia. They don't care about the Ukrainians at all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that the goal is not to free Ukraine. Yeah. It's to weaken Russia. Yeah. And it's actually had the opposite effect. So, yeah. <laughs> well done. Yeah. Another we, government we, program we, going the way we expect, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Weakening us and strengthening them. Yeah. Having the opposite of effect of what it was supposed to, what it was claimed to. Um, all right. Uh, let's, let's do the Tennessee thing real quick, and then we'll hit the, the last few, like, little issues. This is like a, this has been a lightning round, yes. <laughs> essentially, is what it, what it's been. Um, so Tennessee voted to uh, let teachers carry guns in schools. Yeah. And um, I think this is great. This is, of course, what we've been advocating for every time we talk about school shootings. Yep. Is that if you allow teachers to carry guns concealed, yeah. um, expect them to be licensed. Yeah. Uh, and in fact, in this Tennessee bill, they're not only expected to be licensed, but they're expected to have passed a training course as well. I'm good um, with that. In yeah. fact, I I would go as far as to say I would prefer that. Yeah. I have kids um, in school. I feel like that's fair. Now, so I'm pulling, I'm, I've been picking on Jimmy Dore show a lot. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Uh, I like the show. Um, but <laughs> we don't see eye to eye. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they're, 
uh, they bring up things in the news that aren't talked about a lot, and I think that that's great. Um, kind of like us. Well, I hope so. Another thing that I wanted to talk about tonight was the cast review, which is the uh, UK, the um, National Health Service. I'll, I'll get back to the Tennessee thing, I swear. <laughs> uh, we're teasing this, I guess, too. Yeah. Um, the National Health Service commissioned a report uh, looking into the um, the gender issues. Oh, yeah. I remember hearing about that. Um, so I, I downloaded it a couple of weeks ago. I didn't get around to it until last weekend, I guess. Um it's 300 and something pages. And I have other things that I like to read too. Yeah. Uh, and I hate staring at a screen all the time, so I haven't devoted as much time. I'm at the very least going to read the entire summary though, before I talk about it. And just summaries, 80 pages. I'm yeah. 60 or so pages in, but most of the recommendations are in the last quarter. Or so yeah. I didn't really want to dig into it until I've at least finished that. Yeah. Um, on the podcast. But this is something that's getting no attention in the U.S., and it really should. Oh, yeah. No, it definitely should. Um, it has certainly changed the way U.K. is treating the gender issues. Yeah. Or it seems to have. I don't know how much of an impact it's really had in the end, but they, they seem to have kind of revamped how they're addressing this thing. Yeah. But, all right, back to Tennessee. Um what we've said all along is uh, in response to these school shootings that the that if you had teachers that can concealed carry instead of gun free school zones, yeah, that you would have fewer shootings. Yeah, I, I'm not going to say that they'll eliminate them. I don't know. No, I mean I, I can't. I, and guarantee I don't that. believe that. Like I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that. But like I say, at least it gives. It would deter. It would deter, and the damage would be limited in when it happened. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and for those of you that are like, well, you know, the government's already responsible for this. Remember what happened at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas. Yep. The school resource officer did nothing at all. Yeah. Nothing at all. Yeah. I mean, uh, over and over, that's been the case. The yeah. one in Texas, too, was the same way. They were actually preventing parents from going in who right. wanted to, while the police are standing there doing nothing, the parents are fighting, trying to get in to do something. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, like this is this is over and over again. I saw a t-shirt years ago that said um, it was like a woman on the cover with a quote or on the cover on the <laughs> shirt. Front, yeah. yeah. With the quote it said, uh, why do I carry a gun? Because I can't carry a cop. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I thought when I read it actually, well, the cop probably wouldn't do you any good either. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> That's you should true. probably carry a gun anyway. Right. Even uh, if you could carry a cop. <laughs> yeah. Um, but let me let me play what I don't know if it's unfair to say this is the best argument that they had, but this is about as good as it got. Oh, all right. Um on the podcast because all these lefties were just <sighs> flabbergasted that Tennessee would do this like, Oh my God, you have a school shooting problem and you're just going to bring more guns into the school. Ah, oh, this is so ridiculous. Yeah. But this was about the caliber of the argument that they were making on the program. So let's go ahead and listen to this clip. All right. It, it's, it's like the death penalty. I feel like you can't debate the morality of the state's right to take a life un, until you address the fact that you can't trust the state to apply that yeah, right. to people who are actually guilty. You can't even get to whether the state has a right. It's the same thing here. You can't get to whether teachers should have guns without getting past the kinds of people who are working as teachers in our public schools. That is the flaw. That is the fly in the ointment. That is the flaw in the entire theory because having being a product of public school, I can tell you none of those people should be packing. Okay, let me say that he starts off strong. Yeah. I, I wanted to leave that bit in there because uh, about the death penalty, because yeah. I completely agree. Yeah. You know, I, I don't want to give the government the power over life and death because I don't trust them to wield it properly. Yeah. Uh, but then the next, <laughs> the next bit about the, the quality of people that become public school teachers. Do you really want them carrying a gun? Like <laughs> I don't trust them to carry a gun. Do you trust them with your kids? Yeah, right. <laughs> like, come on, like, let's use a. That's insane. Uh, and and, then, and the truth is, is if they're truly not competent enough to handle a gun, and let's be real, 
Like I've been with some people on the range that I'm like, oh, okay. Like yeah. you, you need to spend a lot later. more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You need to spend a lot more time out here with some professionals. Mm-hmm. Um, but like those people won't get the. I get, see some heavy people walking down the street that I'm like, yeah, keep on walking. <laughs> Yeah, well, keep doing that. Sorry, um, that was but, probably an inappropriate <laughs> comparison. But, no, but <laughs> um, but yeah, like the whole idea that there, I mean, these people are going to be trained and have to go through a program to be licensed to do this anyway. Mm-hmm. Like that kind of eliminates that if you do have them brain dead teachers in there. Yeah, you know. Well, they 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 pulled a whole bunch of headlines of um, teachers leaving guns unattended. But like a couple of them were in the teacher's workroom, which when I was in school, students weren't allowed in. Yeah. Anyway, so I don't know how that's relevant. And then um, there was one where uh, students had found a cop's gun in the bathroom at the school. So I'm guessing the school resource officer left his gun in the bathroom. Yeah. Again, that guy was going to be there with a gun no matter what. So I don't know yeah, how right. that's relevant to this. <laughs> um, there was one that... Uh, uh, a teacher had had their had misfired essentially. Yeah. Um, had their gun go off accidentally in a classroom, injured a student. Okay, that's a problem. Yeah. yeah. I, I agree with that. But in the end, after they went through all of these things, I thought, well, as long as you didn't find a a um, a headline that says student takes gun from teacher and commits mass shooting. Yeah. We're still in a better position. I think so. I mean, I would feel safer with my kids if I knew that, you know, teachers were able to do, to do something if something was to happen. Yeah. And they did say, they did make a comment about, well, we're, you know, the, we're not in a situation where people with guns prevent gun violence. Like, you don't see those stories. Yeah, you don't see those stories. But they are out there. They are there absolutely out there. They are the, suppressed. Yes, there used to be a site that went over all of these yes, things. Yes, um... I need to find that again, or see if they're still, or see if there it's even still going. Um, but they yeah. did some of that on the one that did the uh, police violence. Oh, okay. Uh, gosh, I can't remember the name of that site now either. I I don't visit it really anymore because I'm just distracted by other. I'm distracted by war, so I'm less <laughs> inclined for domestic. <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh yeah. gosh, something about the wall. Something blue wall. No, no, no. It wasn't blue wall, but it was yeah. like uh. Oh gosh, I can't remember. I can't remember. I there was um, a there was a few. Of Matt them that... Agarist uh, writes on the site. I, in fact, I can probably look up him and find it. So, yeah. um, take it away while I <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> while I try and look this up. No, uh, but like yeah, there was um, yeah these sites that I mean these stories are out there like this. Um, it happens all the time, but the media has no real like incentive to cover that stuff. Like they're on the opposite end of this. Like this isn't what they're looking for. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, f- the free thought project. Ah, oh, that's the one. Yeah. The free thought project. Yeah. Um, I knew There's, so there was some one other of the ones primary too. writers. I knew if I looked him up, I would find that pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, but there was some other ones too. Cause the mm-hmm. one that's not the one I was actually thinking. of. No, that's not the one that they did. Some of the, um, people with guns preventing gun violence things, but their yeah. focus is on police abuse. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. most I mean, of their stuff is, them too, but yeah, most yeah. of their stuff is police abuse. Yeah. And I, I do remember there was a site that, that put up articles constantly about people yeah. with guns preventing gun violence or, or at least lessening the impact. Yeah. They had like, they had um, this thing. It was like the daily defense or the daily, daily gun defense or yeah, something. I don't something remember like now, but it was something like that. Um, and but the tr- but the bottom line is that, like these stories are out there and they yeah. happen all the time. Yeah. And you don't have any idea about the ones that never happened at all because people might be carrying a gun. Yeah. Well, and the ones that just, just the weren't, deterrent effect is not reported at all. Just oh yeah, well, and like I personally was in an incident one time where somebody with a gun like stopped the incident from becoming worse than what it was, and that person left the scene. Like once things were under control, that person was gone. They weren't part of the police report, or I mean, we told them, you know, yeah. that somebody had showed up with the gun and calmed things down. Yeah, but like they didn't stay to make a statement. Tap on the. 
the butt and say, are you sure you want to continue <laughs> down this path? Is that literally you know? the guy held his gun out the window and yeah. just showed it and mm -hmm. completely fixed the incident that was fixing the, was already pretty bad. Yeah. Um, so like I say, those type of things happen all the time, mm -hmm. uh, at least in the South. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So. Well, there was that story a couple of years ago um, about the what would have been a more severe church shooting that was ended by a guy with a gun. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, it's something that happens. And uh, I, I think that this was a good step. And there's actually something like 30 states, which I was happy to find out. There's yeah. like 30 states that have um, these allowances for teachers. Yeah. Maybe it was 20 something. But anyway, it's. You know, it's like yeah. roughly half the country yeah. um, that allows teachers to carry guns uh, in schools. So mm. way to go. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, so. And then I, I started looking up gun crime statistics in various places and like, you know, uh, New York was actually way better than I thought. Oh, yeah. Uh, but most major cities have like real severe gun violence problems <laughs> and very severe gun restrictions. Yeah. So the argument that if you just keep guns, if you, if you heavily restrict guns, you prevent gun violence is obviously a farce. No, no. You just give the criminals the power. Yeah. Um, so you wanted to talk about gag orders. Oh yeah. I mean, I don't want to spend a whole bunch of time on it, but Good, it's cause just, we don't have a lot of time. We don't have a lot of time. Yeah. But it's just <laughs> wild to me that, um, so I, as everybody I'm sure knows, like Trump's on trial right now in New York. This is the hush money case. This is the hush money case. And, and yeah, I mean, basically everybody involved is allowed to talk about it, but him. Um, and it just, it bothers me that we live in a country where you can be on trial because this applies to him specifically right now. Like that's the reason it's in the media because like, you know, he has a big platform and a loud mouth. Um, <laughs> yeah, he certainly does. <laughs> but like the, the same thing could happen to any one of us where we were put on trial and put under a gag order, not allowed to speak to the media or talk about it. Yeah. And that's wild to me. Like I just, I, I, it blows my mind. Yeah. I don't understand how that's legal because they already have the jury. Yeah. If a jury's involved. So you don't have to worry about spoiling and, and I'm sure in this scenario they're sequestered. So and and they've yeah. been given direction not to research or do anything. So they were talking about that the other night. Mm -hmm. Like like that, those were part of the jury orders, which is pretty standard. I've been on a jury where that was the case, where we were told not to do any searching or digging. Mm -hmm. um, well, it, like these people don't know who Trump is well, anyway. You, I, I mean, I, there's no way you found that many people that never heard of Donald Trump. Yeah, like. you know what's interesting is that I did come across a story uh, about this when they're talking about jury selections and that they had people um, that had said in the the jury selection portion that they um, – you know, didn't have any strong feelings about Donald Trump and that, you know, they didn't, uh, they'd never said anything bad about him or whatever yeah. that the, the, uh, defense then went to their social media and pulled, started pulling it up. Yeah. <laughs> that's I oh, dude. That's wild, man. Yeah. Like I'm not surprised. Like those are the people that you have to worry the most about. Yeah. And that are willing to lie to try to get onto the jury. Yeah. Because that's literally what's going on there. So um, I was listening to uh, Bridget Phetasy's podcast, Dumpster Fire, which I enjoy from time to time. I don't always have time to listen to it, but yeah. she makes me laugh. And it's like a little bit of news, but a whole lot of funny usually. <laughs> yeah. I get a kick yeah. out of Bridget Phetasy. Anyway, she said something about... Um, you know, that you can't find anybody that doesn't have strong feelings about Donald Trump. Yeah. She said, but, you know, like, I don't actually have strong feelings about Donald Trump. I don't love him. I don't hate him, but I do find him hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, and she said, I, you know, I might be the only person in America. I was like, no, no, no. Yeah. That pretty well perfectly describes my feelings about Donald Trump. Yeah. I don't love him. I don't hate him, but I do find him hilarious. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh. Uh, and then um, the last thing I have, and I, don't, I guess we're not going to spend a lot of time on it because we just don't have a lot, but I've just been reading a lot about rent control. Oh, yeah. And I, I and that's what we really need around here. I don't know if you've shot for an apartment lately. Oh, but man, it is it's, unreal. It's, I, it's, it's, it is bad. Yeah. But <laughs> uh, I came across a quote, though, and I, I should have written down the quote, 
but I, so I'm going to try and paraphrase. Um, and it was from a, a Marxist economist. Oh, wow. Actually in the UK, I think, I think he's UK. Um, he said something like, we have never found a surer way of destroying a city than rent control, except maybe bombs. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, <laughs> that, that pretty well describes it. Yeah. So uh, it's, you know what? We're going to save that for another time because there's we'll just too much. this one too. Yeah. There, there's just too much to say about that. And we're, we're, a, we're an hour in. Yeah. I think, or pretty close. I, I can't tell. It's hard to tell because we lost it. <laughs> yeah, because we lost the first 15 or 25 minutes or something. I mean, right. we didn't lose it. You'll hear it. Yeah. It's just not on my device anymore, so it's not counted as part of my time. Yeah. Um, we're 40 minutes into this part. All right. Then we're probably well over an hour. Though, yeah. I got to believe. So, or at least close enough that we should wrap it up. Yeah. Wrap it up, B. Wrap it up. <laughs> um. Oh. So yeah, we'll hit rent control another time. The the wide ranging effects it has on the uh, market for residences is, I'm sure it's insane. Yeah, I mean I know it is because I've looked into it. <laughs> so um, so we'll talk about that'll be our economics topic maybe next week. All right. If the economy don't crash between now and then. Yeah, if the economy, right. <laughs> exactly. Well, that could be part of the problem. We can still talk about it. <laughs> we, can still bring, we still bring that one on in. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and move that down All right. to next week's notes, where I already have an entry yeah. that I was going to talk about this week, but we will be recording on the day before the anniversary next week, so it seemed like it would make more sense to talk about it next week. Fair enough. There's another tease, but I gave no information. <laughs> yeah. Now I got to go look at the calendar and find <laughs> yeah, out what's Figure going out on. what happened on May 4th sometime. <laughs> right. <laughs> and it's not about Star Wars. Oh, may the 4th be with you. Yeah. Oh. Not about Star Wars. Sorry oh. to disappoint. We He's... could talk about that too, maybe. <laughs> I got some things to say about that also. Oh, yeah. <laughs> talk about economics. Anyway. All right. So we'll go ahead and, and wrap there then. Um this is just, yeah, this is a weird little lightning round episode where we talked about a lot of things for a little bit. Yeah, a lot of things going on, so. Yeah. Yeah, it's just hard to hard to prioritize sometimes. Yeah. And there's, there's some things that I just didn't have a whole lot to say about. Yeah. But I wanted to address them. This yeah. seemed like the good week to do that. Yep. I think it was good. So I feel like we kind of caught up in a weird way. Yeah, yeah. But uh, we, all right, let's see, uh, next week is, because I, I got the um, Libertarian Convention coming up, but that's not, it's closer to the end of May. So we got um, four weeks or so before we got to deal with that problem. Okay. Um, I got my tickets today for the uh, Dave Smith show on the 23rd in D.C. Oh, you're going to see him in D.C. Yeah. Um, so if uh, if any of you are going to be there, let me know, Michael at thelibertymike.com. We meet up. Yeah. Um, share a Uber to the show or something. Who knows? Yeah. And uh, let's see. I guess that's all I got for now. Other than that, I'll be with the Alabama delegation some of the time at least. Yeah. I'm awesome. I am not a I'm not a permanent delegate. I'm an alternate, but my experience is that I probably would be able to sit most of the time. Yeah. Uh, you will probably find me with the bottle of whiskey in front of me. <laughs> but I might not be the only one. This could be a <laughs> this right. could be a tough choice. History yeah. would suggest that there might be other people in the Alabama delegation with a bottle of whiskey in front of them. Yeah. Will they all be sitting together? <laughs> Most of the time, possibly. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Most of the time, yes. <laughs> like a row of people with if a bottle of whiskey. If you come over and say Michael, I'll be the one that responds. <laughs> um, I know the rest of those people. None of them are named Michael. So, all right. Uh, assuming that they'll be there. No. I don't know who's going, actually. I have no clue. I'll find out when I get there. Yeah, you will. But um, the Dave Smith show is the first night, so that's before we actually sit with the delegation, so I, I don't I don't, I don't know. know who's there then. Anyway, yeah. So uh, we'll, we expect to be back next week, and I can't think of anything that's getting in the way, but in the meantime, you can follow us on Facebook. You can subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, Podbean. Uh, like and subscribe, comment, share. Um, you can always email me, Michael at the Liberty uh, and please do send me a message if you're going to be, um, 
at the national convention in DC and, or the Dave Smith show on the 23rd. Cause you know, things are fun to do together, I guess. Yeah. Um, and I like meeting people that listen to the podcast. It's fun. Absolutely. It doesn't happen often enough, but <laughs> cause I don't get out of the house very much, right. but it is fun when it happens. And, uh, so we'll be back next week when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later. Mm-hmm.